Haiti in turmoil yes. still, unfortunately. Police are hunting for suspects. The reality is nobody knows who did what and who hired who to do what. Right. That's really what it comes down to. Nobody's in charge in Haiti right now. It's an absolute disaster. Officials, who I don't know who these officials are, they claim four suspects connected to the killing of President Jovenel Moise were killed by police overnight. Two more were detained. Who knows if these were the guys, these right. weren't the guys. Four people died. We don't know if they were the shooters, they were not. Nobody knows who did it. Well, we know why they did it. Right. Because somebody was trying to wrest power mm -hmm. from Moise. Mm -hmm. But who it is, we have we no idea. Haiti's ambassador to the United States, Boshi Edmond, described the suspects as foreign mercenaries. This takes place against a backdrop of extreme violence in the capital, Port-au-Prince, which has claimed the lives of many citizens in recent weeks. The assassination also leaves a huge power vacuum in Haiti. The reality is there is nobody in charge there right now. Yeah. It's really amazing that, you know, they extended TPS. Thank God they thank, did. Thank God they did. Yeah. But when are they going to be able to file? That's That's the, the issue, big question. Right? I mean, now that now that this is going on, the pressure is really on the Biden administration to come out the regulations so that people who are from Haiti would be eligible for TPS. Right. What's also going to happen, which is said, is that you could only be eligible for TPS if you were here on May 22nd or 23rd, whatever that mm. date was that Biden passed the extension. With this going on in Haiti, TPS is going to be extended in, right. for a very long time. Right. So right now it's 18 months. But there's going to be a lot of people who are going to look to try to escape Haiti any way they can. There's violence. There is a lot. rape. It's just really, really bad. And the hard part for an immigration lawyer when you find people who are escaping this type of violence. Mm. From what I hear, just through the grapevine of speaking to people, there's a lot of sexual assaults, there's a lot of assaults, there's killings, there's beatings in the street. I saw a video of Haitians beating up two people because they were speaking Spanish. Jeez. Just because they said, that, you know, we're Spanish mercenaries. Mm. There's a lot of gang violence going on there right now. And it's just, unfortunately, an extraordinarily violent, violent situation, what's going on there now, and no power vacuum. People are going to look to leave that country. Yeah. And the thing that is very difficult, because they're all going to come, they're not going to be eligible for TPS, mm -hmm. they're all going to apply for asylum. That's what's going to happen. So the United States has to be prepared for that, for yeah. that eventuality. People are going to get any way they can to get out of Haiti to get to the United States to apply for asylum. Right now, the airports are closed, but that doesn't mean there's boats, mm -hmm. there's rickety boats, people are gonna risk their lives yeah. on these boats right. to get out of Haiti. It's gonna happen, Yeah. especially now with what's going on. The hardest part for an immigration attorney when you're representing somebody who's fleeing violence is to show that the violence that they're fleeing is not random violence, but violence directed at them particularly because they are a member of a social group that's being targeted. The hardest part of these asylum cases I could already see mm -hmm. moving forward is, yes, you live in a violent society, bullets are flying over your head left and right, people are getting beat up, women sadly are getting raped and sexually assaulted. What is the group that you belong to? that is being particularly targeted mm. for some political reason that somebody was going after mm. you. Because it is political asylum, not asylum. That is the term, really. So the bottom line is, is that in order to be granted asylum and not be deported and returned to a very extraordinarily dangerous country, you have to be able to prove that you are a member of a social group. You're being targeted because you support this politician over this politician, or you are a member of this group versus that group. And that's the hardest thing to prove because most people I would suspect are just trying to get the get hell out. out. Get out get by out. any means. Get out by any means yeah. they can. It's gonna be hard for immigration lawyers, obviously hard for people who are there, right, right. hard for people who try to escape, you're going to risk your life staying. You're going to risk your life escaping. Yeah. There's no right answer. Yeah. And there's no right answer for what Biden's to do. I mean, 
put yourself in the president's position. I just know that it's going to be better than what Trump did. Can you imagine all the people he tried to send back? If, you know, they're there while all of this has been happening. Yeah. You know? Can you imagine? Right. Donald Trump, think about it. You're 100% right, Jonathan. Donald Trump, two years ago, said, I'm going to end TPS for Haitians. It's perfectly safe to go back. Luckily, the court struck that down, said it was illegal. Luckily, Trump lost right. and Biden is president because had the court said what Trump did was legal, had he done it in a smart way, hundreds of thousands of Haitians who are living here legally for 10, 25 years with homes, businesses, jobs would have all been deported oh back gosh. to this chaos. And it was not safe back then. And it wasn't either. even safe back then. <laughs> Right. Let's be honest. So, yeah, it's really bad what's going on there. You know, you put yourself in Joe Biden's shoes. You're like, what do you do? Yeah. You know, you give money. Well, the money doesn't get to the people. It's not getting to the people. They're getting completely robbed by, by the politicians. That's why politicians are getting killed. Mm -hmm. Somebody else wants to be in charge so they could reap it's, all the uh, benefits right. of... Of, of their own people. Of, yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, if I become the president of Haiti, you know what? I'm, a lot of foreign aid's going to come in. Yeah. It's not going to go to the people. It's going to go in my it's pocket. crazy. Not me personally, but whoever. And not saying that that happened here. We don't know. Oh, it like, absolutely with, with happened. With the president, we don't know if that was what the president was doing or not. Though. Oh, I don't know about him personally. Right. All I do know oh, is that the, the government. All absolutely. I do know is that the foreign aid yeah, never yeah. gets to the people. Yes. Never in Haiti. Yeah. Never. President Biden defended his decision to pull out the U.S. military out of Afghanistan, saying the Afghan people must decide their own future rather than sacrificing another generation of Americans in an unwinnable war. Another country that is a failed country politically mm -hmm. that really needed somebody to go in there and help them mm -hmm. build a nation. The United States was in there for 20 years. Like what were we doing for a whole 20 years? Exactly. <laughs> what were we doing there for 20 years? That's a long and time. And how many billions of dollars? 50 Oof. billion, 80 billion dollars? How many lost lives? Right. Okay. And Joe Biden said, we're not there to nation. If we weren't there to nation build, well, then what the heck were we doing there for the last 20 years? And we didn't do a very good job doing it. Failed. Failed. <laughs> Completely failed. And Joe Biden, he was vice president during Obama for eight years. They were trying to build Afghanistan. Right. But they didn't do a very good job at it. Speaking in the White House East Room, Biden said the Afghan military has the ability to repel the Taliban. They don't. My guess is not being a military strategist, not knowing the powers to be in Afghanistan, knowing only what I read in the news, mm -hmm. the Taliban will end up taking over again. Yeah. That's my guess. Biden said, we achieved objectives. We went in, we got rid of Al-Qaeda. That was back in 2001. I was about to say, that was, yeah, that was, early when we started. Yeah, we got rid of Al-Qaeda. Right. Osama bin Laden was living in Pakistan. He, right. ran, he ran out of Afghanistan right. within weeks. Meanwhile, Biden, this is nice though, at least we talked about this, Biden's administration is planning for expedited visas for Afghan people most at risk of being attacked by the Taliban. Biden said the United States plans to move thousands of Afghan interpreters out of the country in anticipation of the end of the United States military mission. They will be moved to third countries where they comply for U.S. visas to enter the United States. Locations are still being worked out. Oh, so at least good. the United States is going to help the translators who are most at risk of being assaulted or killed mm -hmm. by the Taliban. Obviously, the United States already knows the Taliban's gonna take over. Right. Because the Taliban wasn't gonna take over, they wouldn't need to evacuate all the translators. Mm -hmm. Think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Who who helped them. Right. So we're back to after thousands and thousands of lost lives, maybe tens of thousands, who knows? Fifty billion. 80 billion, $100 billion. Imagine where that money could have been spent, okay? We are back to where we were the day before 9-11, the Taliban taking over, and who knows all what- All that for nothing. And all that for nothing. Will the Taliban, you know, start bringing back terrorist elements? Right. I don't know. That's scary. We don't know There's what so they're gonna do, but it's, yeah, gonna, it's gonna go back to what it was pre 9 because the Taliban is gonna take over. Same group, different group of, different yeah. names. Jeez. Meanwhile, rights groups are asking the State Department and White House to add up to 2,000 more visas for vulnerable women and women's advocates. Women police officers, women media workers, women judges, women medical workers, they've all been assassinated, and especially now with the Taliban who does not recognize women's rights, mm -hmm. they're gonna be in trouble as well. 
So for President Biden to sit there in, in the White House and say the Afghan government's got this, they don't got this. Oh, no. They wouldn't be evacuating all these people if the Afghan government got this. We've just been propping up some really bad, bad, bad governments yeah. with our money. And as soon as we leave, they take over. It's a takeover. Meanwhile, the Surfside Florida condo collapse search and rescue efforts has now transitioned officially into recovery operation. Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Lavina Cava said in a news briefing yesterday evening to share this news with the families this evening who are still missing their loved ones was devastating. It's also difficult to share with all of you. The decision to transition to a recovery operation was based on the facts that emerged throughout the search and rescue mission. The facts were they weren't hearing anybody or the canine dogs were not smelling anybody. Right. There was no life under that rubble. I can't imagine anybody would have survived anyway mm -hmm. for very long, you know. And we to, said that. Yeah, I mean, to fall two, three, four, five stories, whatever you are, whatever floor you are on, and then have cement hit you on top of you, <laughs> how are you surviving there? Yeah. You know, so. And, and then not to mention the demolition. Of course. Right. <laughs> like after that, it's yeah. kind of just new. Yeah, I mean, mm. if you're demolishing a building, I don't think I don't think they were expecting to find any live bodies right. after the fact. I think once they decided to demolish the building, they realized there was that, no there was, there was yeah. nobody there, nobody, nobody there nobody alive. alive. Uh, exactly. Yeah. The search has continued Wednesday despite Elsa and the condo collapses raised questions about whether other residential structures could be at risk in Miami. Florida's legal community has created the Condominium Law and Policy on Life Safety Task Force to review laws governing the state's condominium. This is the issue, hmm. okay? An engineer came to the Surfside condo. Yes. Okay. If the initial assessment, which was that the condominium was missing some support beams within the cement mm -hmm. that the architectural drawings had I don't know, making this up, 10 support beams, but there was only five. Mm -hmm. There was only seven. That seems to be the initial assessment of engineers, that the building was not built to the specifications of what the engineers required it to be built. Right. It was built with less steel, less support. Why? Because obviously the- Cheaper. Probably. Cheaper. Yeah. Right. So a week ago or two weeks ago, I said, what the heck is this engineer coming and saying, don't get out of the building? You know, they're looking at and they're saying, oh yeah, well, you know, there's some cement coming down. But the reality is this. I mean, unless the engineer has x-ray vision. Right. How the heck is the engineer supposed to know what's behind the cement walls? Mm -hmm. How many beams are there? The engineer is, is looking at the architectural drawings and, and, is, and is assuming, for argument's sake, there's 10 support beams there. When maybe there was only five. Had the engineer known there was only five and not ten, maybe he, the engineer would have said, hey, get out of the building. This is not safe. Mm -hmm. But you can't expect the engineer to no, have x-ray vision. Not. Were they trying to blame the engineer? No, I was oh. trying to blame the engineer a week ago. Oh. But I'm taking it back now. Oh, yeah. So now when they say Florida's legal community has created the condominium law and policy, I mean... If, if in fact it was not built to specification, you blame the, the person who built the building exactly. who is now dead. Yeah. They're dead. Oh, were they in there too? The no, person? they died oh. years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, but the Florida legal community has created the Condominium Law and Policy on Life Safety Task Force. How the hell are they gonna go into buildings unless you're going to rip out the cement of every building and take a look to see if it was built to specification. Right. Because now I don't trust any building in Florida that right. was built in that time frame. Exactly. Because if this building wasn't built to specification, there's only one, if that's in fact what happened. If this building was not built to specification, and that seems to be the going theory at the moment, and it was not built to specification, that means somebody from the town, the town engineer, came and okayed the structural support before all the cement came in. Yeah. So obviously somebody got paid off. Yes. Okay, because nobody would okay something that wasn't built to specifications. 
So if you were paid off on this building, who's to say that? You would say you were paid off on a lot of buildings. That's why I feel like I feel like every building in Miami should like they need to get um, an inspection. Like there feel, has to be an inspection has, where you have to go into the building. cement. Yeah. And I don't know how you I'm do sure, it. I'm sure the engineers will find I, something, I, yeah, like I'm sure, some type of way to Yeah, find I'm sure out. there's a way to figure it out because you but just can't. every building in Miami needs yeah, that now. Yeah, I mean, you got you to, like, open up the walls. Yeah. You know, I remember when I had an old house. And I was building, you know, and, uh, you know years ago when I was married. I'm divorced now. But when I, I, I bought an old house, I remember the contractor came over. He's actually a guy from the West Indies. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I wanted to build another section above my house. He's like, I don't know if this house can take it or not. And they literally had to open up all the walls to inspect all the different beams to see what was in there. You can't mm -hmm. tell by just looking at a wall. So I think the engineer came, they look at walls, they say, okay, there's some cement coming down. But nobody looked to see if this was built to specification. Yeah. Is there, would, do you think there would be any type of way, yeah. like whether it's the government or the mayor, who ha would have to, be the one to say every single. Would, they would have. They would have to either pass a regulation or a law. I guess. I think that yeah. needs to be. Meanwhile, like mean, passed. meanwhile, top local prosecutor in Miami, uh, Dade County State Attorney Catherine Fernandez Rundle, also said Wednesday she has formally tasked the grand jury with investigating the cause of the collapse. All the debris removed from the site is considered evidentiary debris. The remnants are being sorted on site, and any objects that can be distinguished are put in certain bins. So there's going to be some criminal charges but they're going to be brought against people who are dead yeah that's what's going to happen and here donald trump trying to still stay in the news has decided to sue our friends at facebook and twitter and google trump announced from bedminster new jersey because he would never announce anything from trump tower in new york city there would be too many protesters there against him right at his golf club that he would serve as the lead plaintiff in a class action lawsuit arguing that he has been censored wrongfully by tech companies speaking about freedom of speech and the first amendment which applies to the government trump called his lawsuit which was filed yesterday in the united states district court of the southern district of florida a very beautiful development here's a guy who has had more failed <laughs> lawsuits than probably any person living in the united states of america do you know he tried to sue the nfl years ago as the uh when he started the usfl league and said the nfl was a was a uh was a, a monopoly he tried to force his he, he tried to force his way into the NFL with an NFL team, the the New Jersey Generals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he lost that lawsuit, but it was like he spent hundreds of millions of dollars on that lawsuit. But on this particular lawsuit, you know, I'll give you my two cents. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Constitution of the United States, Jonathan, does not guarantee freedom of speech mm -hmm. to every human being. Mm -hmm. What the Constitution of the United States guarantees is that the United States government will not restrict somebody's freedom of speech. That doesn't mean a private company can't restrict freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. That means you, you can't go, I can't go into Jonathan's apartment and say something that you don't like. And you say, you're not allowed to say this here and assuming you would be able to muzzle me. Mm -hmm. I can't sue you for blocking my freedom of speech. It's in your apartment. As long as the U.S. government right. doesn't block your freedom of speech. These are private companies. Are Facebook, private com right. Facebook is not the United States government. Nope. Twitter is not the United States government. And Google, they can restrict anything they want. Yep. Now, the argument that Donald Trump is going to make is, well, the United States has made regulations that allow Facebook and YouTube and Google to be shielded from liability if somebody says something that is false. So in other words, for example, Jonathan goes on to Google, mm -hmm. says Brad Bernstein is the world's worst lawyer in the world. He is a liar, he's a thief, he's terrible. Ooh. You would never say that. Ever. Okay, I can sue Jonathan for slander, for slander yes. but I can't sue Google, Facebook, or Twitter because they're shielded by United States government mm, law. Mm. So what Donald Trump is saying, since the U.S. government has shielded them, they are now part of 
what the Constitution is considered the United States government, um, uh, not, not barring any freedom of speech. Now, assuming that argument even works, mm -hmm. which I don't think it would, there is still not unfettered. You know what the word unfettered means? What's that? Unfettered means unlimited mm. freedom of speech. So, for example, you can't, you can't go and uh, freedom of speech, for example, there's obscenity laws. All right. You can't you can't ha you can't put up a video of having sex with a minor. Mm -hmm. Somebody can't say, well, that's freedom of speech. Well, that goes too far. Yes. All right. You can't you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. OK, because you're going to cause a stampede and cause danger to people, which is kind of what. Correct. Trump did. <laughs> correct. He yelled fire in the in the in, in the capital. <laughs> right. So even if even if. You say because the U.S. government has passed a law shielding Google, that freedom of speech extends to them, that they can't bar freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. You still, they have rules and regulations that they treat everybody the same. Right. Okay. And you can't, you can't advocate to overthrow the U.S. government. You can't advocate hate speech. You can't advocate to yell fire at a crowded theater. Which is everything Trump did. <laughs> All right, so a man in Austria, Jonathan, mm -hmm. he was bitten on the genitals by a python oh, while he was on the toilet after it's believed the reptile escaped his neighbor's home and slithered through the drains to get him oh, on, the, man. on the ass. On the ass. So it came through the toilet. Through the toilet, the Jeez. neighbor's snake. The 65-year-old man was nipped by a five-foot-plus albino reticulated python at 6 a.m. while he went to have his morning sit oh down gosh. with his newspaper on the toilet. I couldn't even imagine that happening. Shortly after he sat on the toilet, he started reading the day's news <laughs> by his own account. He felt a pinch in the area surrounding his, the let's say, ass. Yeah. <laughs> the snake a non-venomous constrictor native to Asia can reportedly grow up to 29 feet long. Ooh. The unnamed victim was taken to a hospital for treatment. A reptile expert also responded to the man's home and removed the snake before cleaning it and returning the pet to its 24-year-old owner. I would have been I would have never thought that it, that a snake would be able to slither I've through heard, I've through heard, the pipes. I've heard of stuff like that where snakes can slither through the pipes. Had I been bit on the ass by a snake, my first thought would have been, what the heck did I eat yeah. last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what the heck did I eat last night? I would oh, want to wow. see the, um, the, the owners of the snake. Uh, yeah. Would, would they have? Perhaps. I mean, because just like when a, a dog bites you, you know, like, well, well, kind well, of let, me, let me, let me tell you, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, I don't know what the rules Austria. are in Austria. Austria. Um, I don't know what they are in Austria, but in America, in New York, mm -hmm. first bites free. Really? Yes. In other words, first you, bite from my dog, from your dog is free, is a free bite because you're not on notice that your dog is a biter. You can't control your animal. So unless you're on notice that your dog is a biter, first bite's free. So if you get a dog and you let your dog loose and it's running around and all of a sudden it bites me on the ass, mm -hmm. I can't do anything. You didn't know your dog was going to bite me. So but now, if my, if my dog but bites now bites, somebody, else. bites somebody else a second time, then they can sue you. You're like, you knew but, that but dog. You, but you can't sue. You can't I come can't back. I can't sue. I can't. No. So, you know, the second, person, the second person, the second person would be able to sue and say, you already knew because the dog bit Brad. Mm -hmm. You should have. You you that's foul. But that's the law. I'm not that's saying it's right. You. It is foul to me. I'm not saying you're right or wrong. Because I'm you just can't saying, even sit down now. Yeah. The man had 11. 11 snakes oh, no. in his apartment and a what? gecko. Come on, man. Yeah, which was kept in terraniums and drawers inside his residence. And now the authorities are investigating the snake's owner on suspicion of negligently causing yeah. bodily harm. But I'm just telling you what the laws were in, in, America. in America. Meanwhile, a gigantic 3D cat has appeared on a billboard in Tokyo. Oh. Shown between advertisements, the hyper-realistic feline comes to life on a 1,600-square-foot curved LED screen. Oh, that looks crazy. Look at that.
you imagine? That's awesome. I would want to just walk by there and just keep watching right. it. Right, that looks awesome. That's just a video screen. In the evening... That it, looks crazy. Yeah, between 7 a.m. and 1 a.m., the video changes throughout the day. The cat is first startled awake in the morning, and by the afternoon, it could be seen standing up and meowing to passers-by. Wow. But by evening, it lies down and goes back to sleep. Tokyo is just awesome. I'd They're like to go. Always, yeah. Yeah, but they're under lockdown again for the Olympics. For the Olympics, yeah. yeah. sadly. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, Russian tech giant Yandex, you know what Yandex is? It's the Google of Russia, announced it also now has driverless robots that will soon deliver food to students on college campuses in the United oh. States after they agreed to a multi-year partnership with online food ordering company Grubhub. Pretty awesome. Yeah, so we're going to have Vladimir Putin delivering us our food now. <laughs> Sometimes described as Russia's Google, Yandex offers a variety of services from advertising and search to ride hailing and food delivery. Dmitry Polishchuk, the CEO of Yandex self-driving group, said, We are delighted to deploy dozens of our rovers, taking next step in actively commercializing our self-driving technology in different markets across the globe. But do we really like that type of stuff? Like, would we want that here? Because this is taking a lot of jobs from people. Yeah, I don't, I, not only that, but I, how do I know that this thing's not going to run me over? I mean, it's a little thing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm, more, I'm more concerned with people's jobs because I see so many people here in New York that take that, you know, and that's the well, only way they can make money. Yeah, well, if you are a new immigrant or you are a college student, you know, doing this type of work is how you're going to make a living. Right. It's going to hurt you. Yeah. Absolutely. On the flip, and and on the flip side, people, working. right, on the flip yeah. side, people who have master's degrees in engineering, they're going to have more jobs available to them because Yandex presumably needs people with masters in engineering and computers to make these robots and fix them and design them. Meanwhile, a dentist with a very painful wisdom tooth who didn't want to wait to get an appointment with someone else took matters into his own hands. What the hell? Yes, the dentist Burhan Khan Bafra, who lives and works in northern Turkish province of Samsun, filmed himself as he looked in a mirror in order to make the injection in the right place before yanking out his molar. A patient of mine, he says, failed to turn up for midday appointment and I had some free time I was already in extreme pain myself because of the wisdom tooth, so I decided to give myself anesthetic, which was to relieve some pain. Initially, he gave himself the injection because he just wanted to relieve the pain. But since I had some free time after my pain pass, I decided to pull it out as well. The doctor said that the procedure, which took about seven minutes, went surprisingly very smooth. He did surgery on himself. He was like the Rambo of Turkey. Remember see that movie Rambo when yes. you know Rambo he doesn't have time to bleed he just right. he just stitched himself up. Now the Turkish dentist said that he was inspired by another surge and the moment came on social media when a Russian doctor pulled out his own wisdom teeth. I said I could do that too. So I decided to pull out my tooth that way as well. But I, mean, I would not want him to go back and start operating on other people later today. He's got to be really uncomfortable right. and he has anesthesia. He's like I'm waiting for my next patient. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be that next patient. No, I wouldn't either. But I mean, it's just the, the the numbing. It's not going to actually like make you feel slow or anything. It's not the inhaling type of, you know. Yeah, but still, you're thing. still some under some sort of anesthetic, and you have to do surgery on the next person. Yeah. No dentist in Turkey for me, thank <laughs> you. And lastly, Jonathan, authorities announced on June 29th that a priceless painting by Pablo Picasso. You ever hear that guy? Yes, sir. It was recovered while a suspected thief was arrested nine years after its stolen disappearance. Wow. Picasso gifted his woman's head painted in 1939 to the Greek people for their resistance against the Nazi occupation. The painting, along with the Dutch master Piet Mondrian's, Mondrian's stammer mill with summer house, was stolen from the National Gallery in Athens in January 2012. Questioning the main suspect, a 49-year-old construction worker, led Greek police to discover the stolen paintings wrapped in plastic sheets and hidden in a dry riverbed in the outskirts wow. of Athens. <laughs> you imagine they hid wow. it in the woods. Damn, I was in Athens. They two hid years this ago. in the woods, but you never stumbled upon the Picasso Jeez. in the woods. I should have went to the woods. Yeah. The AP reported that the art pieces were purportedly relocated to the riverbed not long before the finding. The thief allegedly decided to choose a more secure hiding place upon hearing the news the police were about to make an arrest. The painting is of special importance and emotional value 
as the great painter personally dedicated it to the Greek people. Wow. So it has been recovered. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.